Hey everybody, Brooks from Drag Times here. I'm out here at the Supercharger with my Tesla Model 3 Performance. And I got buzzed on Instagram from someone who just got his all-wheel drive model updated with the $2,000 software update that brings the zero to 60 down from 4.4 to 3.9 seconds. We got both cars charged all the way up and we're gonna head out. I got the Draggy and the V-Box. I've seen some people get some zero to 60 numbers, but I'm really curious to see on the top end what the all-wheel drive non-performance with the software update gets because if you look at some previous trap speeds between this and before the software upgrade, they're actually within one or two mile an hour. So if this picked up a bunch of horsepower, it could be close on the top end. So I'm gonna get full draggy results, quarter mile and more on the upgraded all-wheel drive model. And then uh, we'll see what happens on the top end with uh, these two cars. We'll test them both using the testing equipment to see what the difference might be. Then next week, we might take them out to the drag strip and give them a run down the quarter mile. So let's jump in the cars and get them tested out. So what do you call the dual motor now with the performance upgrade? I'm thinking dual motor sport or maybe a half a line. I don't know how you're gonna designate these because these ones are gonna be sleepers. They're gonna be faster than everybody else. $2,000, zero to 60, half a second quicker. Let's see what it does on the top end and kind of talk about it and think if uh, it's worth the $2,000. Let's get moving. All right, so I'm in uh, the dual motor with the $2,000 upgrade. One thing it does change, um, it doesn't add, it takes away standard. It used to have to say chill and standard, and now it says chill and uh, sport. So uh, I got the draggy, I got the V-Box, and uh, I got him behind me in my performance model three. And uh, we'll give it some tests and see what the zero to 60 quarter mile is. I believe these cars are running low 12s before the software update. So I'm expecting this thing to dip in the 11s. Let's see. All right, you ready? One, two, three, go. Yeah, that's fine. I, I just kept going because I wanted to get the full quarter mile. That's cool. Do a quick zero to 60. I just did one zero to 60. It came in at 3.6 seconds on the V box. Let's do it again when the light turns green. Here we go. There's 60. There's the quarter mile. Another 3.6 to 60. Let's see what this quarter mile came in at. Wow. This is crazy. This thing did quarter mile 11.9 at 117 miles an hour. Green screen, here we go. 60. Okay, so let's talk about numbers before we get to the uh, really interesting and fun stuff. The Tesla Model 3 all-wheel drive with the $2,000 boost upgrade came in and did a an astounding 0 to 60 in 3.56 seconds. Now you'll see in the car I said 3.6. That's because the V-Box rounds. So 3.56 rounded is 3.6, but actually did multiple runs in the 3.5 range. That is with rollout. Without rollout, the V-Box said 3.901. Now you might look at the draggy results and see that they were slightly different. That confused me as well. So I went back and tried to figure out, because usually the V-Box and the Draggy are very, very close together. And uh, after looking at the data a little more, you could see on the Draggy was saying 0 to 60 was 4.04, .04, and with the rollout, 3.63. But in the upper right-hand corner, there was a little stamp that said invalid, and that's because it said it had low satellites. So as you can see in the car where I had that mounted, it was a little farther back, and the V-Box is right up in front of my dash. 
So I'm gonna have to go with the V-Box results for both the quarter mile times and the zero to 60 times because I think the Dragon just didn't have that great of a signal back there. Nevertheless, let's talk about some more data with regards to the quarter mile time. So quarter mile data, as per the V-Box for the uh, all wheel drive with the boost performance came in at 11.89 at 116.5 miles an hour. So, wow, so in the 11 eighths, at 116.5 miles an hour. Now, now I brought up some V-Box data of the my Model 3 performance at the track last time I had it out, because that's my most recent results, and that's after the 5% uh, addition that Tesla added, which I'm not even sure is really there or not, because I didn't see like huge differences, but nevertheless, my car at the track ran, and this is on the V-Box, 1162 at 115.8 miles an hour. So let's take a look at those trap speeds for a second. We're saying 100 and over 116 miles an hour uh, for the non-performance Tesla Model 3 with the upgrade versus 115.8 miles an hour for the Tesla Model 3 performance. So that would lead you to believe that the all-wheel drive model on the top end could actually be faster. If you eliminated the start, because obviously you know the performance is doing 0 to 16 3.1, this is doing 0 to 16 3.5, that's a couple car lengths off the start, and obviously it's reflected by the quarter mile times as well. But if you're rolling and you're trapping like that, it's a very, very close race. All right, so based on that, let's get on to the fun stuff and see what happened in the real world with these two cars. And then after that, I'm gonna come back here and talk about uh, the $2,000 upgrade, if is it worth it, how it compares against the Model 3, and some rumors that are coming up about Tesla Model 3 that have leaked out in the past couple days. So you saw it, uh, amazingly, amazingly close. It all depends on who gets that initial kind of jump and what happens, but pretty much, it looks like they're dead even on the top end with maybe the performance model having a slightly pull, but with regards to different charge levels and different kind of conditions you might be in and whoever gets the jump, it's pretty much a dead even race. And I gotta say, with no sound coming out of these cars, it's pretty, anti-climatic. It was hard for me to actually watch the videos back 
and figure out like what was actually going on when we, when we were actually starting those those runs because it's just so quiet you don't hear gear changes you don't hear sounds from the engine and all that kind of stuff that you know we're used to when we kind of produce some of these videos so let me know in the comments below what you think about you know taking the less expensive all-wheel drive car adding a two thousand dollar power upgrade and uh, for all intents and purposes, aside from that initial launch, they are basically the same. Obviously, there's some other differences that you don't get. You don't get the upgraded brakes. You don't get the lowered suspension. You don't get the carbon spoiler. You don't get track mode and some other, some other things, something to do with the pedals as well. So there are some still differences between the two. But if you're not into tracking the car, you don't care about the suspension, and you're not doing all kinds of crazy braking or on the track, this car makes up a lot of the difference on the top end acceleration. So that being said, there have been some kind of code leaks and rumors that I've seen on some of the blogs about the possibility of a Tesla Model 3 performance with ludicrous mode and a 100 kilowatt hour battery. Now, now if that happens, we're talking about some serious power in the 3, and I think which could be encroaching on the uh, Model S performance. I mean, obviously, it's not that hard to figure out. If you take the smaller and lighter car, put the same battery and the same motors in, what are you going to get? You're going to get something that's faster. So I'm really hoping that comes out because honestly, the Model 3 is a really, really fun car to drive. Uh, the only reason I don't drive, my, drive one on a daily basis because I was kind of waiting for the Model S Plaid to come out at the end of next year. Obviously, that's going to be even faster with three motors. But in the meantime, I think a Model 3 uh, Ludicrous with the 100 kilowatt hour battery could be probably running in the low tens in the quarter mile. And that would be super awesome to get my hands on. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That helps out the video and the channel. And go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We'll keep the videos coming. Let me know in the comments. Do you think Tesla made these cars too close in performance if you're just adding the $2,000 option to all-wheel drive to separate the performance model from the all-wheel drive? Or do you think it's just a normal progression of kind of tuning and making progress with cars? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.